What's up guys, we made it to Detroit to head to downtown Louie's Lounge to showcase to you guys the fanciest junk food that Detroit has to offer. Detroit is known for many things, the Tigers being very, very close to Canada, Motown, culture, Marshall Mathers, 8 Mile, crime. But the truth is, it's, there's not as much crime here anymore. It's actually a pretty safe place to be. My very close friend from when I was growing up in Saratoga is now the executive chef at Downtown Louis. He's going to bring us back in the kitchen. We're going to get our hands in there and make some of the fanciest junk food we've ever made. All of our meat comes from Farm Field Table, Michigan dry-aged beef. Uh, we've got lamb burgers, turkey burgers. The Reuben here is outstanding. Wiggly's corned beef out of Eastern Market. It's local. I want to give back to everybody that's around here and working their asses off. These are oyster mushrooms from Detroit Mushroom Company. Oh, look at those mushrooms. The ones that go into the fried mushroom dish are called shimiji mushrooms. So it's like sweet, it's heat, it's salty, a little bit of acidity. I can put this shit on everything. What is happening? Oh yeah. I like the journey that brought me on. One of the things we saw on your menu was like the Impossible Burger. So you have something that's completely vegetarian. Is that what that is? Yeah, it's a vegan burger. Hey, Jen, you want to whip me up some beer better? All-purpose flour, dry mustard, Cajun spice, and M43, that's draft beer. Thank you. Shimiji mushrooms. This is all from Detroit Mushroom Company. So they cultivate these in old shipping containers on the outskirts of Detroit. Now you got to drop them separately because otherwise they'll all kind of stick together. Yeah. These mushrooms on a burger? Oh, heck yeah. Might be pretty good. Got the lemon, the arugula. Lemon truffle vinaigrette? Stop. <laughs> Spicy aioli, a little arugula salad. And I'm a big fan of just letting them fall. All of the little details is what brings it that level. You got that mushroom marmalade. So you get sweet heat, you get lots and lots of salty notes in here. I could just eat this all day. Yeah, the mushroom's where it's at, man. Yeah. These things are delicious. They're so fresh, and I mean, it's like, yeah, it's elevated comfort food. We should do the Reuben, though. The Reuben's ridiculous. So you shave off meat for your sandwich every single time? Every single thing. Fresh slices. That's what makes the Reuben special. Yes. It's a beast, you know, it, it represents the city. That seems like a lot of meat for a sandwich. Okay, yeah, I might have put a little extra on, but I'm, I'm kind of hungry. You got the rye bread, you got the corned beef. Get it a little bit crispy, get enough for two big ass sandwiches. Add a little water underneath to steam it. Oh, steam this stuff. Eastern Market's got the best pastrami. I'm talking Detroit, Michigan, not New York. Clifton, you're a New Yorker, though. I don't know what the hell I am. <laughs> Going down with that Thousand Island dressing. You guys make that in-house? Uh, of course. So you get a little bit of caramelization on the kraut, all the spices and the whatnot. Levels of flavor. I got this. We're going over. Behind. <laughs> okay. This one? Yeah. This one, yeah. Oh, no. I did it. That was me. Yeah, you're welcome. So you get that nice crunch. You get that ooey gooey. Quality ingredients really does make the difference, guys. Absolutely. Mm. You want to just drop me down two orders of fries? Keep them right there. We'll pop the fries on it. So the solid process for the French fry is you cut them. And soak them, blanch them, let them set out on trays, and then fry them again. When they say it's garlic and rosemary fries, that means it's garlic and rosemary. They literally drop it in the fryer with the fries. French fries are my favorite food because they're salty, they're hot, they're crunchy. You can smother them with shit. You can dip them in shit. You can eat them plain. I could eat them until I fell asleep. I think I have eaten them until I fell asleep. All right, so truffle salt. This stuff is probably pretty pricey. Uh, it's not that bad. Truffle oil, Parmesan, and that looks incredible. Oh, high of hell. <laughs> oh, that looks so darn good on camera. Oh my god. This might be the most elevated French fry dish I've ever seen made. Mmm, good. If you've never had truffle before, give it a try. Black truffles are actually found by pigs. Are those truffle pigs? I'll use them as a truffle pig. Biggest compliment I've ever gotten in the kitchen is a 90-year-old woman coming up and asking me, what the f did you just feed me? It was delicious. <laughs> that was my mom. Your mom's 90? My mom's pretty old. Actually, mom, I'm sorry. We're not, that's not going in the video. That is delicious. Oh, man, Julia. Incredible. It's super tender, easy to bite through. That ain't Tyson. You ain't getting that in the freezer section. I love this. Yeah, the balance is perfect. I'm speechless. I might have to have like a couple minutes to myself and come back refreshed again. We're on jumbo wings. Jumbo wings. 
I brine them for 48 to 72 hours. Basically, you soak it in a big ass pot of liquid that's seasoned really, really well. Soy sauce, honey, a little bit of lime juice, ginger, garlic. We do half flats and half drumette. Flats are my favorite. I think the meat's better in the flat too for some oh, reason. Sure, and there's more of it. That's Julia drumettes. likes the drumettes because she likes to hold on to something, you know, before she mouths it down. Hey, I didn't say it, they did. Look at that. Peanuts is like my pastime. One of my head cooks calls me Charlie Brown. He says it's because it's my curl. Usually I get crybaby. I get alfalfa sometimes when this thing sticks up. Yeah. And if they're racist, they call me Jackie Chan. But all right, let's keep going. <laughs> uh, with the honey and the brine mixture and everything like that, you get a nice, crispy, golden color. So we got three kinds of wings. Pomegranate barbecue, buffalo style, and Parmesan truffle. Pomegranate barbecue? What? Pomegranate barbecue. You make those buffalo sauce here? Of course we do. Can you guys smell that at home? You probably can't. I feel bad for you. I got 99 problems, but smelling truffle ain't one. Pickled celery. Because you're fancy. Because I'm fancy. Don't don't mess with perfection. The flats are my favorite. Because you can just take it. What? What? You can do both. Oh. Oh. Okay. That's how it's supposed to be done. <laughs> I feel like this menu is endless of delicious gloriousness. Guys, if you're watching this on an empty stomach, I feel really bad for you. You might want to go somewhere, grab some food, come back and finish watching this. All right, guys. Let's get some more sauce on our face and then let's get back in the kitchen. <laughs> we got mac and cheese to make. This right here is a bechamel, which is butter, flour, cream, and the cheese melted within it. Melted in, which, which basically makes it more of a mornay. Just get it on and get it ribbon. So cheesy, so good. Ooey, gooey, yummy, tasty. Because I do this, it creates this little crispy thing and it's just like a cheese it The cheese it's are one of my favorite foods also. What kind of cheese is that? This is shredded aged white cheddar. Oh, look how cheesy, ooey, gooey. Parmesan, buttered breadcrumbs, herbs, fish with a little bit more Parmesan. I can like a little bit of greetery. Is it delicious? Cause you look like you're crying. Julia, I think this would taste great on a burger. So maybe I think that when I make my burger, I'm gonna do like a mac and cheese style burger. No, you're not. I already told you that's what I was doing. You're not allowed to copy me. This is so good. No, this is a legit versus. I already called mac and cheese. Now the burger challenge has to begin. Clifton, you're on it first. Let's see what you got. Then it's me and then JP. What? Then I win. We already know what beef patty you're using, 25% shroom, 75% dry aged beef. That lemon salt, lots and lots of seasoning. Cause it's a burger and it's big. JP, you can't eat that. I'm going 100% dry aged beef and I'm gonna make sure this is generously seasoned. I'm gonna put it right next to his so you can see which one's better. Now the lamb burger is the only burger that goes on the grill for that char flavor and because of all the other ingredients that are in it with the spices and everything. I see what you got going on JP, doubling up. I don't butter my buns, because I put mayonnaise on them. 25% mushroom, 100% beef, and then the turkey back there. And then those are JP's dry looking hamburgers that he made. I'm gonna do risotto for my burger. I'm gonna change it a little bit. It's not gonna be what you think. I love risotto, it's an amazing thing. Toss it in this batter here. That looks like mush. Oh, he's going flat top. That might be the way to keep it together. That's a lamb burger on top of that tzatziki. Comment, let us know if this is the burger of your choice. Everyone looks like they're panicking and I'm just having a great time. We got the bottom bun right here. Come over here. So we're going to go on with a little bit of Thousand Island there. Lettuce, just like that. More Thousand Island? Pickles. A little bit of onion. Mmm, beautiful. I really wanted this to work for you though. I'm not going to lie. You really wanted it to work for no, me? No, I'm just kidding. I wanted you to lose. This is JP's thing, guys. It's the world's fanciest Big Mac. No? Gluten free. Except for the bun and other stuff possibly. <laughs> yeah, we're taking some bacon. I got this. Yeah. You seem nervous. Come on, get out there. It's gonna be beautiful. It's gonna be glorious. You don't worry about it. Pomegranate barbecue sauce. This is the fanciest, most high calorie fine dining burger that you could ever make. And I made it for you. Are you guys surprised that I made this and not JP? Turkey burger, big jam. So cheesy. This is probably our biggest seller here at downtown Blues besides the Reuben. The mixed mushroom burger here. Cipollini onions. A little bit more of the spicy aioli. I come back with that mushroom marmalade. Spicy tatsoi, arugula, and lots of mustard greens. That's our James Beard Foundation for the Blender Burger Project. So here it is. Chef Clifton's blended burger. 
JP's imitation of a fancy Big Mac. Their classic turkey burger, lamb burger here, and Julia's mac and cheese bacon loaded extreme amazing thing that everyone should vote for. <laughs> Which burger do you guys want to try the most? Vote for it on the poll and comment below. And you never know, we might end up back here in Detroit. Yo, Canada, <laughs> we're so close, we're not coming over back. <laughs> oh yeah. I gotta say that's really good. With that barbecue sauce on there, the mac and cheese, it brings me full circle. I feel like I'm in the south and I just brought it up north. JP, you wanna taste your burger? Uh, not really. <laughs> You've done well. Not bad. For being so ridiculously weird. Mushrooms, dry aged beef. Oh, juicy as I think he's happy. It's a really good burger. The Blended Burger Project is happening now. You guys have to vote. Scan this QR code and vote. You've only got until the end of July 2018 to make this burger become the winner. All right, Chef, thanks again for having us. We're gonna end this video with deep frying some Oreos. What a fun treat. So you have a chance to get reviewed. Yeah. And then once you get reviewed and you're the best, then you get to actually yeah. go. It's like Willy Wonka's yeah. Chocolate Factory. <laughs>